Welcome to Business of Design. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. The Business of Design podcast offers immediate, actionable strategies and a glimpse into some of the many field-tested, proven systems you can implement to transform your business and your life. After the show, head to businessofdesign.com and get started with the BOD 15-step project management strategy and six foundational programs. Together, they deliver the systems, procedures, and strategies you need to run a successful, highly profitable design business. There's no theory here. The complete BOD business model is yours through Business of Design membership. Business of Design. There's only one. And now, your BOD Advocate-in-Chief, Kimberly Selden. fabulous interior design professional. It is so good to be here. It's the middle of summer where I am, maybe where you are. Not so much if you're in Australia. I know our seasons are flipped, Uh, but uh, certainly loving all the outdoor living and just counting the days uh, that are left and thinking ahead to that inevitable turn of the seasons, right? When things start to get cooler. And that had me thinking about this dynamic of the push and pull of tension and how so often we hear people say that tension or stress is bad. But I think there are so many times in my life where a bit of tension or a bit of stress has been extremely helpful. So that's the topic. Episode 336, we're going to talk about tension and whether it's good or bad. And since it's summertime, I'm going to keep this episode short and sweet. Why not? I'm going to quickly do some announcements. Cheryl will be back next week, but I've got just a couple of announcements. There is still space available if you want to learn the BOD 15. Now I know you're listening to the podcast. You think you're getting so much of what you need out of the podcast and that makes me happy, but you're missing fundamental systems which would allow you to run your projects smoothly, seamlessly, from the beginning to the end and everything in between. You're missing all of those important systems and strategies if you have not yet become a member or implemented the BOD 15. So what we're doing is offering two-day events where I will download, do a major brain dump from my head to yours, everything you need to know about the BOD 15. We did this in Australia last year and it was really fun. Some of the people didn't know anything about the BOD 15 and how to run projects in a linear streamlined fashion. And that was incredible. Other people have been members. They've taken the BOD 15 course before and they wanted a refresher. And that turned out to be really helpful too. I always say it's like an AA meeting. You don't go in and get sober and say, thanks, I'm out of here. You have to keep coming to be reminded. I would really love to see you in Toronto on October 4th and 5th. I promise a small, intimate group you can ask specific questions about your specific business. And I will tell you as much as I can in two very full days. These events tend to be small and intimate. We're probably going to do this one at my condo on Yorkville. So you'll be coming to my place, which will be lovely. We'll have a wonderful lunch for you. You will leave with a plan on how to run projects. And I guarantee you will be so happy you came. So that's October 4th and 5th in Toronto at my place. And then we are going to Washington, D.C. or Winchester, more specifically, October 25th and 26th. I booked my tickets today. Can't wait to go. D.C. is just such a fantastic city, and I love to build time on either end of these events so I can hit up a couple of museums. So if you have a recommendation, let me know. But again, two full days. I promise you day one, it's going to feel like, oh my gosh, this is too much. It's like drinking from a fire hose. But by day two, all the pieces start to fit together and you can see people just kind of go, oh, okay, I got this. And they leave and they feel so empowered. And I would really love for you to sign up. If you're in the Toronto area, October 4th and 5th. If you're in the DC area, October 25th and 26th. Thank you so much for supporting Business of Design. We really appreciate it. If neither of those work, all the information you need is available and so easy to attain at businessofdesign.com. So do think about being a member. And I will say one more thing. 
If you have thought about becoming a BOD boss member, you've already taken the courses, you've already implemented, you're working with the 15 steps, we would love to get you into a group. We have immediate openings and we also have on the horizon another group we'll be building in North America. So please fill out that application and register right away. And by the way, if you show up to Toronto or DC, you have completed the 15 steps. So boom, boom, that's a way to fast track it. The results we're seeing within our boss groups are truly staggering. It's everything I wanted for so many years, but couldn't find. And we would love to have you be part of that. So that's it for announcements. Yes, we do need you. We need your support. We're so grateful to this community and we have so much more work to do. So thank you for considering membership or signing up for an event or considering being part of a BOD boss group. Now let's talk about tension. I'm like you. I instinctively, I don't want a lot of tension in my life. I don't want a lot of stress. I especially don't want stress in relationships. I have a difficult time sitting in unresolved or free-floating anxiety. I want to solve things. I don't want to get a headache or have a stomach ache because I'm worried about some situation. The kind of tension I want to focus on today is not the overwhelming stress that comes with a health crisis or some life crisis. I'm talking about the kind of tension that has to be there if you're running a business. And I think tension can be healthy. I follow a guy named David C. Baker. He's an author, a speaker. He's been on the podcast before, and he helps entrepreneurs sell their businesses. And David put out a newsletter recently that was all about this topic, the topic of tension. And he's come up with some points that he says are healthy ways that tension plays out in a business. For example, being certain enough about how you want to run things but always cautiously open to discovering where you need to modernize your thinking. I never want to be locked into knowing how I'm going to do everything. I'm always open to new ideas. And one thought that comes to mind is this idea that rather than billing clients for freight and shipping as we go along, uh, you might include a percentage on top of everything you sell that would automatically cover it. So I'm exploring what the math looks like and how that might work in my business. I'm not sure I'm going to switch, but it's interesting for me to always be aware that I might learn something new and improve on my process. The second idea, and again, this is from David C. Baker's newsletter, doing what you can to keep an awesome employee around without crippling the long-term prospects of your firm and benefiting from a younger and less expensive employee who brings new things to the collective experience. In other words, while it can be scary to think about letting someone go because they've gotten bigger than you need in your firm, or they're pretty good, right? They're not great, but they're pretty good. And you have found yourself recently working around them, compensating, making allowances or making excuses, right? And it's been a niggling idea. There's some tension that maybe this is not ideal. Maybe it's time to find someone else. The other side of the equation is you might get some new fresh ideas in. And we talk about this a lot, particularly in our BOD boss groups, settling for good when great is just around the corner. That's something that holds a lot of us back. You know that tension, right? You've got this staff person or you've got this independent contractor and they're pretty good and you can't imagine life without them. But there are some things falling through the cracks, And it seems scary. I'm just going to ignore them. I'm going to work around. I'm going to take care of this person. I'm going to enable this behavior. And then before you know it, you really have worked yourself into a pretzel to keep an employee happy. When in the long term, it may be a better idea to just let them go. Very few things are scarier, at least in my experience, than knowing I need to make a change. But fearing the confusion of the transition that will follow that change. That can be really scary. So we live with the stress. We live with the tension, which is trying to get our attention. Or we make a bold strategic choice 
to aim higher despite the short-term discomfort. I know I've said this expression before, but every single day I have to make a decision multiple times usually between discipline or regret. And tension is almost always the indicator light that goes off in my body, letting me know I'm at a crossroads. When I have that feeling, I know I need to pay attention, slow down for a second and think about what's going to happen next. And I also have to remember I'm playing the long game. It's not about surviving this one project with Mrs. Smith. It's about surviving the many projects that will be part of my future and perfecting the team that I have. I can also say from experience that letting someone go, particularly someone who isn't terrible, but someone who's not quite right or not quite up to the task, can be a shakeup for the whole team but that often can be a really healthy shakeup. And I've had the experience where other team members have said that was a good decision, even though it was hard. And we miss that person. We like that person, but that person was holding us back. So there you go. I guess all that to say, just pay attention to those feelings of discomfort. Give them a moment of your time to figure out what they're trying to tell you. I'm not going to go through every single one of David's ideas, but I really loved this one. And this is timely because I did a coaching call with someone this morning. Someone hired me to be their business coach. And we talked about this exact thing. When you price your work so you are certain you will land the job, are you sure that's a great idea? The woman who phoned me today is running a beautiful, mature, profitable business. All things are going great. She gets this shiny new job in the distance. It's kind of a dream job. And immediately she begins to second guess all of her pricing structure. She pretty much follows the BOD 15 and she's second guessing everything. She wants to price her work a little lower to make sure she gets the job. There's no question there's tension and stress there. No question at all. I've been exactly there. I want this job. However, it's never really worked for me when I've lowered my fees or negotiated or second-guessed myself. Somehow it always turns around and I realize it was a mistake. Sometimes you just have to trust and let it go. Easy for me to say it's not my dream job that's on the line, right? I totally get it. And the decision is a difficult one, but I have found over and over again that sticking to what I know works what makes me successful and what makes the project successful is always a better choice. Every single time I compromise my rules, my strategies, my systems, I live to regret it. Ugh, that's a tough one. Here's another on the list. Something I struggle with to this day is chasing sunk costs. How do you know when to cut your losses? I've done this when I've hired staff. I hired uh, two people uh, who were the most expensive hires ever. Really, it did not go well, but I kept trying to make it work. And it cost more and more and more money. I kept saying, but I've already invested so much money in them. I've spent so much time training them. And I just kept spending money. It's really hard for me to cut my losses. This might be true if you've invested in some new software and you spend months trying to ramp up and make it work and months and months and more time is going by and you're still not loving it. At some point, I have to stop myself and say, let it go. It was a bad idea. I'm not going to continue to throw good money after bad, right? And I guess the bottom line is I'm always looking for when I have that tension or that stress I know something's up, but so often I'm busy, 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 and I'm ignoring that. But if I would slow down and pay attention to that and just sit in the room with it, be alone with that discomfort and tension, I might see what's really at the root of the problem and be able to make changes. I do think the best business owners, particularly of small firms of of firms that are flexible and creative and nimble, like most of the people listening to this podcast, we can benefit from experimenting with tension. 
and being willing to be teachable is extremely important. So like I said, I'm always learning from this community when I'm coaching someone or I'm working with a BOD boss member or we're in the BOD Zoom meetings. We hear a lot of different ideas and I always think, is there merit there? Am I fixated on doing something the same old way when maybe if I let go, it would open up something bigger and better in my life? I'm like everybody. I want to rest on my laurels. I want to keep doing what's working. But I've found that there's a moment where the status quo begins to pull me down. And that's a tension again that I can feel. And when it's happening, I have sort of an instinct to kind of like completely do an about face when that isn't usually the best thing. Probably the smartest thing usually is to just sit down, think about the analytics, maybe make some small changes and go from there. David C. Baker says, it's a mistake to veer off the road, but it's a bigger mistake to not experiment from one side to the other. You'll never learn much if you chart a path right down the middle. I think that's true in business and I think that's true in life. I hope your tensions are small. I hope they're helpful. I hope they motivate you to make the changes you need to make to have the best business possible. More than that, I want you to have the business you dreamed about when you first started out, right? I had this vision of what business would be like. And the way I started without a plan, without systems, without strategies, ooh, I was never going to get anywhere with that. Slow down, make a plan, be open, be teachable. And if you find something that works, if you find a community like this that works, then dive in, really embrace it. The people who come to Business of Design who are brand new, barely running a business, but they throw everything in and they just implement those 15 steps are people who are wildly successful within two years. And conversely, we see people who've been doing this 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and they're so committed to doing it the same way they've always done it that they never really see the success. So we never make decisions about, for example, BOD boss members based on how long you've been in business or even really how much money you're making. It's much more about who's motivated and ambitious and ready to take chances and go for it. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be ready to take chances and to go for it. And I hope one day very soon we'll be in the same room together and we'll be able to share our stories. Happy summer, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening and supporting the BOD mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. If you're ready to implement an exact business model for running a streamlined, profitable business, field tested by thousands of design professionals around the world, head to businessofdesign.com and get started today. It's time to dramatically improve your business and transform your life.